So good morning, everyone. It's so lovely to see um, so many geeks outside of San Francisco. Um, I'm the CEO of People Browser, and we do advanced analytics for the social stream, which is now coming in at the rate of 10,000 posts a second. And what I dream about is how do we take those posts, this collective memory, and turn it into a collective intelligence. And I was explaining to my uh, kids, you know, Daddy, this is, what you, this is what Daddy does. And my little boy, who's 12, was sort of looking at me like, you know, so what, you take 10,000 posts a second, Dad? And I said, Sam, do you know what a typewriter is? Because I was trying to give him some perspective. And Sam thought for a minute, and he said, Dad, a typewriter is what they used in the olden days to write emails. <laughs> And so what I'm about to talk to you about is why Nielsen panels will be like typewriters. Um, and so our, our, the problem that we set ourselves was how do we use this sort of mushy stream that's coming in very fast and turn it into high-value analytics that could replace Nielsen as the primary data that's used for media buyers. And as you guys probably know, um, Nielsen has become institutionalized. And um, the Nielsen panel has become institutionalized. So one of the challenges for us is how do we take this fuzzy data and make it look like Nielsen data? Which is sort of annoying for me because you can go into the stream and you can see what people are really saying about TV shows or your brand, but no, we have to convert it into numbers and metrics that looks exactly like what media buyers want to see. And so um, we took 900 major TV shows and we built communities around Twitter data. Does anyone know how you can uh, define a community using Twitter data? Any ideas? Hashtags. You're good, hashtags. Uh, there's more? Keywords. Keywords, that's not the one I'm thinking about, but there's more? Geography. Lists, that's good. There's one more, which is top of my mind. No, OK, this time for $20 flash cash. <laughs> Sorry, Tim, I am corrupting your audience. What's that? No. No, here's the $20. Oh, come on, guys, this is easy. Oh, my God, who said that? The girl in the back. Stand up. Someone give her the $20. Uh, did you hear what she said? She said, um, bios. So if I say I'm a CEO, I'm in the CEO community. And most people, can you give that lady that money, please? <laughs> most, most, and I'll be asking one more question later. Um, most people actually put really interesting stuff in their bios, and we used Twitter bios to put people into communities. So um, what was the challenge, though? The challenge was that media buyers want to see under 18-year-olds and 18 to 24-year-olds and 24 to 35-year-olds and how do you use bio data, keywords, and hashtags to do that? Um, again, it was annoying for me because I would rather know that someone was a CEO than knowing that they were 25 to 35, but that's what media buyers wanted to know. So the challenge was, how do we convert that? Um, one more question. How do, you, how do you tell from fuzzy data whether someone is in the age group 18 to 24? Oops. I've almost told you the answer. Um, my next slide is the answer. Um, and how do you take very mushy data about TV shows and um, filter out the stream? So um, there's, a, there's a TV show called House, and we found that it took 50 elements of a query to actually d define the TV show stream for House, because there was my house and there was your house that had to be excluded, and there was contextual words. And what we ended up with spending about 2,000 man hours of time building these queries to actually clean up the stream. That was a much bigger problem than we thought it would be. And um, we built a huge spreadsheet. Uh, we loaded it up into our data store, um, which had about uh, 10 billion conversations in it. Um, and then we had to um, define these communities. And so any guess how you can determine whether someone is in the age group 18 to 24? 
without knowing their age? This is a much more difficult question. So I'm really delighted to see that you guys are not motivated by cash. Um, this is a tech audience. So what we did was we loaded in the names of every college in the US. And we looked at language that 18 to 24 year olds use. And then we loaded up words that people in other age groups used and we excluded those. So we came up with these giant queries. We then went into our data mine of 110 million Twitter users and we extracted these people. And this is a sample of the query that we had to build for under 18 year olds. In the end, we found 30 million mentions. Gee, how much better is that than a Nielsen panel? 30 million mentions of TV shows uh, since the beginning of this year. And when we did all of the washes and built the demographic data for the media buyers, we found 1.6 million people under 18. And then we tested that and we iterated to make sure that that was right. Um, and for the geeks, um, not to let you down, um, the process was take the fire hose, um, put it through a, um, a, a queuing um, algorithm, that, an open queuing algorithm that we use called RabbitMQ, indexed it with another open um, indexing system called Zapian that we tweaked, um, put it into our search engine, and then ran it through what we call the communitizer. The communitizer was this set of very, very complex queries. And we did it all historically and then in real time so that TV producers could actually see in real time what different communities were saying about their shows in real time. And then we did the same um, with the TV shows. And we washed that data on the fly through the community data. And that's what it looked like. That's the UI that we built. It's sort of a V0. Um, and it has sentiment in it. And it has two toggles. Um, one is by show and one is by community. So if you select the by show toggle, you can actually select a show. And the one that's up there is 60 minutes. And then you can see, both historically and in real time, what the sentiment is based on Twitter mentions for um, by community for 60 minutes. Anyone tell me what those peaks are on that chart? Um, yes, you're good because it's when the show runs. <laughs> um, and it, as expected, you'd see the peaks when the show runs. And, it, and you can expand that chart and go very granular down to by minute data. And, what, and the next step of this work is that we are washing the audience against mentions of brands so we can show producers that not only is there an audience under 18, but of the under 18 year olds, these guys are talking about Pepsi and these guys are talking about Coke. Um, and just to finish up, there are other people who are doing this work too. Um, and, and this is an interesting one called Social Guide where you can actually log on and look at an app um, as a consumer which tells you what your friends are talking about at the moment. Um, and then there's one called Trender TV, um, which is also really interesting. Uh, different, different depth, different degree of analytics. Um, and then there's another one that I like particularly, which is Bluefin. So um, in my last 40 seconds, I'm just going to share with you the roadmap um, for our analytics. And, and for us, um, the most important thing going forward, or the questions that were asked a lot, is who are the major influencers by community who are talking about my TV shows? And so uh, we are launching in San Francisco next week um, something called CRED. And um, CRED is a bipolar um, influence score, which measures, measures both your generosity, your outreach, and your influence. And it's by community. And it's transparent. And it includes a full history of everything any particular person has done on Twitter because we have the full three years of the firehose. 
Thank you very much, guys. That's the end of my presentation.